Welcome back to Combat Mission Battle for Normandy and the Scottish Corridor campaign. It's been a little while and I've been giving the campaign a bit of thought in the meantime. In the Scottish Corridor there are three levels of difficulty, Green, Regular and Veteran, and as you play the campaign, your performance in certain missions can bump you up or down. I've been going through this so far, willing to try harder, take more risks and sustain more casualties to make future missions easier, while success actually translates into a higher difficulty. This is all in the campaign briefing, it's just taken this long to sink in, but this isn't a campaign where failure to succeed in a mission means it's all over. In fact, the player can only fail the campaign after a certain point, which we haven't reached yet. So in other words, I think I need to take my tryhard pants off and put on my sensible force preservation pants so I actually have some troops left for when it really matters. That brings us to the sixth mission, 10 for 10. We're back with C Company, 2nd Argyle and Sutherland Highlanders, who got pretty beat up clearing out the edge of Colville a couple of missions back. They're supported by a scout section in carriers and a single 6 pounder AT gun from the battalion support company, plus a two tube section of 3 inch mortars and a four gun troop of 25 pounders who have been in action all day and don't have a lot of ammunition left. C Company is punching south from Turville, taking advantage of the morning's attack throwing the Germans off balance and aiming for the bridge over the Odon at Termaville. The mission is to destroy enemy forces scattered about the farms and houses north of the river in order to prevent them interfering with follow-on forces and to exit as much of my own force as possible off the map to the south. The exit objective is about a kilometre away and there's an hour on the clock. Destroying the enemy is worth 350 points in total, the points the enemy will get for stopping me exiting is unknown, and there's a 100 point bonus for keeping my casualties under 20%. The terrain is pretty open, there are a lot of big wheat fields that can provide good concealment to infantry, and there's a large farm complex with some woods and orchards on the left, immediately outside my setup zone, that's the Fernde Rosses. Beyond that, the ground slopes down towards the Odon, where there are some isolated houses and thick woods along the riverbank. The river itself is fordable along its entire length here, so it's not an impassable obstacle to infantry, but my vehicles will have to use the bridge on the right next to the Talibosk mill. Again, the weather is a little foggy and the ground condition is wet, so vehicles going off road have a higher chance of getting bogged. With all that in mind, I think I really have to decide whether to focus on clearing the enemy out or moving forward. The combination of ground and wheat fields on the right is pretty attractive. I suspect I might be able to move my infantry down that corridor pretty rapidly and without undue exposure, though I would have to mask off the Firm de Brosses and the orchards and houses on the left and assault the Firm de Pouplier and the Talibosque Mill on the right. Generating infantry fire from the wheat fields might be problematic as they obviously can't see anything when they're prone. Alternatively, I could go the other way and clear out the left half of the map while masking the right. This means more clearing and shorter ranged fights, which have not gone well so far in the campaign, but would likely mean the destruction of more enemy troops. The briefing suggests that the enemy is very disorganised and made up of the remnants of units shattered earlier on. I'm not sure how I'll be able to tell the difference as so far all the enemy have been fighting to the death. The sensible option is going to be to take my time, probe forward with the scouts and judge the options that emerge through a force preservation lens. The caveat to all the combat options here is that my infantry is not only low in organic firepower but already under strength, so I really want to do the minimum of fighting if I can. The first thing that happens when starting the game off is nothing. Pushing the scout carriers forward draws no fire, nor does advancing 13 platoon through the wheat field on the right. 14 platoon on the left, closing in on the Fern de Brosses, spots some enemy infantry, but they're already leaving their foxholes and quickly fall back out of sight. It's not until the 10 minute mark that some kind of static contact emerges. It looks like there are some German units holed up in the wood behind the farm. The scouts seem able to cruise about with impunity, they must be visible to any Germans down slope by now but they're not drawing fire, so I start to move them left to cover off the back of the wood. 14 platoon is already in position to pressure the enemy from the front, with the carriers in position to cut off the enemy line of retreat and the FO starting a call for fire, I can probably throw on a textbook attack here. 
Naturally, it's not that simple. One of the scouts is shot by unseen Germans in the auctions behind the wood, prompting me to pull them back a little, and the FO doesn't exactly have great line of sight to the spotting rounds coming in. This makes him slow to correct, and after a couple of rounds land close to 14 platoon, I call the mission off. There's still one in the air though, and it lands just behind one section, causing a casualty. We're already at the 20 minute mark too, so a third of the way through, and although I'm newly committed to being slow, steady and careful, I am feeling the need to get a move on. With 14 platoon all set to push the wood from the front, 13 platoon in the centre right throws out a section to either side. Two sections moves left to pressure the wood from that side and screen the flank of the scout carrier in position to work the cutoff. 3 section meanwhile has loaded up into the company Bren carrier, being understrength has a few advantages, and is moving off to the right. The other two scout carriers have progressed a fair way ahead of my infantry without attracting any fire, so I'm starting to shift 15 platoon right to make some ground on the Ferme de Pouplier. 13 platoon's 3 section is heading off ahead in the carrier to test the waters. And they're fine, until they hop out. A few metres alongside, a man from one section is lightly wounded by a burst of machine gun fire. This looks like to have come from the attic of a house in the centre of the map, a suspicion which quickly resolves into a spotting contact, and then a tripod mounted MG34. It switches onto three section as they leave the carrier, taking out two men before they can go to ground and disappear into the wheat. Another MG opens up as well, probably from one of the other houses on the left, and three section rapidly become pinned. This is a problem. The centre house is just under 500 metres away from my infantry, so well out of effective range, and while the FO can see the building, I'm not confident in the ability of the mortars or artillery to reliably destroy the MG team in there. HE or smoke may suppress or blind them, but in both cases the effects are temporary, and with my limited artillery ammunition, I don't want to use any of it up without being able to tie in some greater forward movement. The scout carriers can engage, so they start shooting up the attic with their brens while I start crawling three section back towards the company carrier so they can get out of trouble. This is a terrible idea. The brens limited ability to suppress thanks to its 30 round magazine means that the HMG is able to hit the section again as it tries to mount up, causing three more casualties. It would have been a lot smarter to just leave them where they were, hiding in the wheat. In the meantime, things have kicked off on the left too. The first team from 14 platoon to reach the edge of the wood spotted a German soldier in there and managed to shoot him without getting spotted in return. Building up the number of men along the edge ultimately sees a firefight erupt. Spotting is difficult, but I've got two sections online here, the range is quite close, and I'm able to area fire the general location of the enemy to good effect. Some of them get spooked and try to run, only to be gunned down by a third section covering the rear or the scout carrier on cut-off duty. After a few minutes of shooting and plenty of visible enemy casualties, I start moving the flanking section from 13 platoon in from the right. It's an exercise in being steady and careful, but ultimately the German survivors in there are either mopped up or picked off as they try to flee. All in all, it's a very successful attack, a couple of squads worth of enemy infantry wiped out without sustaining any casualties of my own. I've also got a trick up my sleeve to deal with that MG34 in the centre house, the 6 pounder. Although it's an anti-tank gun, it does carry 7 rounds of high explosive and it can engage the centre house from the crest of the hill. Putting all of these rounds into the attic should hopefully have caused some casualties and or encouraged the enemy to stop being such a pain. By now we're halfway through though, I'm still nowhere near that exit objective and while the centre house may be out of the picture, there's still another MG down the hill somewhere, plus whatever enemy there are hanging around in the woods or at the mill or in the orchards on the left. Half an hour is not a long time to punch forward, but on the other hand, resistance has actually been quite light. The Germans in the wood didn't try and fight to the death, and the casualties I've sustained from the HMGs feel like they're a lot more my fault. I can at least try to press forward. The scout carriers are again further forward than my infantry and again they seem fine. Using up the smoke from the 25 pounders and 3 inch mortars is enough to screen my advance from the Germans. The centre house HMG is of course not out of action and the second HMG is finally spotted further to the left. But despite taking some desultory fire from a German mortar team dug into the tree line, I'm actually a lot closer than I thought I would get with much fewer casualties than I thought I would sustain when the timer runs out and the game ends. 
it's a total German victory, which is fine. I got 84 points for destroying enemy forces, inflicting a total of 15 dead and 10 wounded, mostly in the woods on the left. But the scout carriers actually inflicted a few losses on the German HMG teams. In return, I've lost 3 men dead and 6 wounded, which kept my casualties below 20% and gave me the bonus 100. The Germans, on the other hand, scored their maximum 800 points because I didn't exit any forces off the map. With the benefit of hindsight, it probably would have been smarter to advance down the left. I took some fire from there earlier in the game, so wrote off the orchards as an avenue of attack, thinking about the kinds of bloody close range fights I've been struggling with so far in the campaign. There was, in fact, a German squad there, but I think I convinced myself it was much larger and nastier than it was. So instead, I tunnel visioned down the left, taking almost all of my casualties to HMG fire out in the open wheat fields without being able to effectively reach out and touch the offending Germans due to the range. This is a challenging campaign. Even in this mission where the enemy were not heavily armed fanatical crazy people, the victory conditions felt pretty punishing, and I feel like I'm starting to exhibit the same kind of slow, methodical and careful tactics that the British are often criticised for in Normandy. Regardless, despite this being a total defeat, the British go on after this mission to secure the bridge over the Odon and establish positions on the far bank. With the rest of the battle raging on as well, the Germans aren't able to react and counterattack before sunset. Instead, they start preparations by conducting some probes in the night, one of which we're going to have to deal with in the next mission. Hope you all enjoyed this and found it interesting. I'll catch you in the next video.